Hello everyone, welcome to Game Day in the PCC on the Porter County Sports Channel, streaming live on the internet at regionsports.com, facebook.com slash regionsports, and facebook.com slash PCC sports. We come to you today from Couts High School as Berkey's Family's Farms, and Couts presents the Hebron Hawks taking on the Couts Mustangs in the semifinal round of the PCC Boys Tournament. I'm Mike Shamia. I'll have the play-by-play -play for tonight's broadcast, and joining me with the color analysis is Jay Simmons. Jay, how you doing? Great. Great to be here. This is the first time I've been to the PCC tournament. I am impressed. We got a first timer out yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, it is a crown jewel of tournaments when it comes to Indiana basketball. There will be onlookers from uh, not just the area, but across the state as well. People will be checking that John Harrell scoreboard today. I know that's for sure as everyone is tuning in to see the results of these morning round games and to see who will play this evening for a PCC championship. Speaking of championships, Couts has won three straight PCC tournaments, looking for their fourth, but they'll have to get past the Hawks in this one. So Jay, what do we, what do we have to expect? What do we have, some key notes to look forward to? In this game, I know that, you know there's some history here yes, there with the last matchup, and uh, these two teams know each other very, very well. Yeah, you got Hebron Reese Mars leads the PCC in scoring at 21.5, and three pointers made with 37 on the season. So he's going to be the he's going to be the guy to go to for Hebron. Yeah, I, I, I just say just you know. It's, it's going to be a good game. It, as, as he goes, so, do, so does Hebron. So it's going to be an interesting how they're going to match up with them, you know, defensively with for Couch. Yeah, Mars is the straw that stirs the drink for the cocktail of the Hebron <laughs> Hawks. And it could, they could be potent. They've had times where they uh, were able to go on some really, really good runs with Mars being the catalyst. However, in their last meeting, uh, this Couts team is very, very, very good, folks. And they were able to beat the Hebron Hawks 83-67. to 67. Mind you, Mars hit six threes that game and had 36. So, you know, he's known to explode at times. But, and, and, you know, maybe defensively you, you, you don't double-team him, but you cut him off from passing and getting assists and just let him be the score, and then that way they can contain the rest of the team. So that's, it looked like it was a good strategy in the first game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, there was also some very, very well-balanced scoring from that last affair from the Couts Mustangs as Baker had 27, Croft had 20, Ketchmark had 14, Ballas with 12, and Joe Vick with 10, the man in the middle. So you'll hear all those, those names today in this game. But what's also on the line, folks, not just... Punching your ticket for the 8.30 game tonight, playing for a championship, but you're also playing for something more right now, perhaps, and that's the keg. <laughs> there we go. So the victory keg was a trophy idea. It was presented. Uh, I think we're getting eyes on the keg there at center court. That we are. So, folks, for you watching at home, you'll see that it's painted black and gold, the color of the Couch Mustangs. Okay. And it's just been kicked. Yeah, someone <laughs> kicked the keg, right? <laughs> we, get, we get eyes on it. He's like, he's like, oh, yeah, my bad. Uh, d does that mean the keg changes hands? I don't know. I d is that keg interference? I think that, yeah, I'm going to go with that keg interference. Yeah, keg interference. I, yeah, I think you have to exit the gym, and that's what appears is, is happening. So may not be allowed back in this one, but we'll be probably watching it on regionsports.com. Uh, you can also catch it on facebook.com slash regionsports and facebook.com slash PCC sports. But anyway, back to the keg. So the victory keg, this idea of having this trophy was presented in 1957 by then Morgan Township High School coach Elwin Studer. And this was a suggestion actually from the Morgan Township class of 1956. So Fast forward a little bit to Friday in November 1957, Boone Grove and Wheeler play at Wheeler High School, and there was a draw held earlier with all eight county schools to see who would possess the keg to start. Wheeler won the draw. Wheeler immediately went and painted it green and white for, the, uh, for that game, and then the first school to win the keg was Boone Grove, beating Wheeler by a score of 52-42 to 42 in that season. So playing for a keg, 
playing for a chance at a championship, a PCC tournament championship at that. Yeah, it, and you know, some PCC notes here. Uh, it was officially, formally uh, called the PCC tournament in 1958-59 season. So that, that's a lot of history here. Couch is 63-52, and 52, a 54% winning percentage in the tournament, has won 11 times including the last three. So it is a little bit of dominance there by Kautz. Yeah, the, the, the Kautz empire and era <laughs> is underway, and folks, we're just witnessing it. Yeah, uh, Hebron is 85 and 46 with a 64% winning percentage and has won 17 PCC tournaments. Wow. So a lot of history between these two schools in this tournament. This tournament, this is the 99th year of the PCC. And for boys, it's the 99th uh, anniversary. And for girls, it's the 50th anniversary. So we'll see the uh, girls' championship game uh, tonight here at Couts uh, this evening at 6 o'clock. So we have a lot of action in store for you tonight, folks. And here come the Hawks as they take the court. Yeah, a little... Uh Bit nice crowd reaction as they come out, run to their bench with just a minute to start, a minute before we start. Yeah, so uh, if if you if you notice, uh, we have cheer blocks on both sides. So as we pan to the right uh, underneath the American flag, you see the cheer block there for the Hebron Hawks. So, and, and folks, there's a Spirit Award winner. This tournament has it all. So uh, we'll see who's got the most spirit amongst all of these schools participating in the Porter County Conference. Uh, as we then now pan to our left, we'll see the couch student section, the keg sit in front row, best seat in the house. No one's messing with the keg now that it's being protected <laughs> after it was kicked at center court. Uh, and you see, you know, there's a little theme night too. So you see some, it looks like a little bit of USA theme for couch. Uh, and you got the, the pajama pant theme over there for Hebron. Yeah, so, I, I see uh, a Tom Brady jersey in the front there for Couts. Love that. Tom Brady making his run, too. <laughs> so yeah, you, you got football today as well. But, you know, well, you, you can have that on cable, and you can have this game on the Internet. You can have double screen going. Yeah, there you go. Basketball, football. Here we go, moments away from this uh, star-spangled banner rendition of our national anthem. Thank you. 
Oh, beautiful rendition right there. Moving, touching. Yes. Not every set of eyes in this gym are dry right now. That's a fact. So the Hebron Hawks, they'll be announced first. So six foot four, number 30 for the Hawks. And that's Lanton and Hale. Number 10 for the Hawks, Riley Blank. Number 22, Reese Mars. The big score right there. Logan Zacharias, another senior at 6'3". And Griffin Moore, 6'1", senior. Griffin Moore ranks 45th on Hebron all-time scoring list with 629 points coming into tonight. Or I should say this morning. Yes, so Griffin Moore and Reese Mars will be that duo of scoring, a scoring pair, and they'll have their hands full today as they go against this very talented Kautz Mustang team. Three times they've won the PCC tournament in the last three years, looking for their fourth in a row. Tristan that is, that is putting a nice run together right there for the Kautz team. Matthew Baker, Connor Croft, standing at 6'2", Joe Vick, you'll see him working both blocks this evening, and then number 22, Aaron Ketchmark. So the starters for both teams tonight, the Couch Mustangs will be wearing white with black numerals outlined in gold. The Hebron Hawks will be wearing red with white numerals. A little crazy train playing, a little Ozzy Osbourne before tip. Give him a little spin of the dial. There you go. Crank it. And that's what these student sections plan on doing. I, I, I'm going to say this is going to be a very exciting matchup. It's going to be a high scoring. Some three-pointers three being shot tonight, or this afternoon. And here we go. Croft into the right wing to Ballas. Ballas back up to Catchmark. Catchmark looks down low to Vic. Oh, he's out of bounds. Good call by, oh, they call push. Looked like his foot might have been out of bounds before the push occurred, but good call by the official. Yeah, Larry Babcock on that call. He makes the first call of this evening for the three officials that we have down here. Inbounding right now, the Cops Mustangs underneath their own basket, and that's Connor Croft with the ball to catch Mark. Get another look to Vic. Vic, great move inside yeah. with the score to start the game. Well, a nice, nice feed right there to get him off to score. Very, very good. Quick pass coming straight out of the out-of-bounds underneath sets. Kevin Duzan, outstanding job as a coach. They went 29-3 and last year as a state runner-up looking to get to the championship game here on their home court. Some good ball movement, some good cutting away by Hebron. Drive there by Riley Blank. Say so it's going to be number 12, Connor Croft. Yes, Croft picks up the foul. Reese Mars has the ball in the corner. He gets it back up to Hale. Hale swings it. It comes right back this time now. Reese Mars, no good. Good defense by Counts right there, altering his shot. Ballas. They get the reversal. Baker. Top of the key, they reverse it once again. Met by two Hebron Hawks. Get another ball reversal, so good movement here by the Mustangs. Good deflection there by Griffin Moore. It's going to stay here with Couts. Both teams early on getting some good ball movement. Just good defense right now. Not able to get an open look. Vic. 
Got it. That's the long two. So Vic with both baskets in today's game to start. Heber looking to respond. Some solid defense right now by the Couts team. Just doing a nice job making sure that the screener doesn't have an open look. Mars with it at the top of the key. Jab steps, pulls for three, fires, no good. Rebound, catch mark. He'll run. Puts it behind his back, driving hard. Left with a right hand finish. And that's a timeout for the Hebron Hawks. It'll be a 30 second timeout, so we'll stay here. Che, good start here for the Mustangs. Yeah, they're doing some great ball movement. Nice job right there on the reversal. And they get, a, they get an easy layup. That was number 22, Aaron Ketchmark with the layup right there. Did a nice job, just good reversal, good cross-court move. They are moving the ball, getting up the court. Hebron right now, just not getting a, not able to get a good look at the basket. Yeah, this Couts defense is very stout. One thing about Couts too, folks, if you haven't seen much of Couts in the last few years, is this team loves to play to what their nickname is, their Mustangs. They get out and they run. They let their horses run. Last year, their team slogan was run as one and they went 29 and three doing so. So we see a transition basket early and we may see it often in this one. Good strong drive on the right side, no good. That was Riley Blank with the miss, catch mark. And oh, nice cross court pass right there. Yeah, so catch, catch mark. Yeah, so catch mark able to hit Croft. Croft now at the line, he'll shoot two, looking to extend this lead beyond seven and get it Perhaps an 8-0 ball game potentially here. Yeah, Hebron just not getting that, that look that they want offensively. Boy, he used every inch of the rim on that one. Absolutely. Got a little shooter's touch. So checking now in for the Hebron Hawks is Skyler Martin. He comes into the game. He'll box out the shooter, but unnecessary there is it's now an 8 to nothing lead for the Mustangs. Hebron's got to set some nice, better screens to get a screener open. Counts does a nice job, though. As, as the screener comes up, they are rotating, switching defensively. Yeah, they are doing a very good job of switching off ball. They also have been known this season to have very quick defensive rotations when teams try to reverse the ball on them. So this is going to be a difficult match up here and that's what you're going to need is you're going to need some straight line drives from Reese Mars as he gets a bucket here first one for the Hawks and, and you know Couts every time that Hebron has gone to the basket has had somebody there looking for the charge and so far so far no calls by the official Vic now has it he gets it down low to catch mark catch mark with the finish and one what nice catch nice feed and he did a great job he never came down the ball never came down below his shoulders he got it and caught it and went right back up. Using all of that 6-3 frame and wingspan yeah. by not bringing the ball down, an excellent job. And he's able to hit the iron a couple times, but not able to make it a three-point play. Nonetheless, a 10-2 ball game here early in the first quarter. At Hebron right now, just a little stagnant offensively. Reese Mars looks to dance a little bit, gets it, passes it. Air time, Martin, no good. Again, another contested shot. Transition three attempt in the corner, and that right there is Matthew Baker as he gets on the board. Baker, the only guy that was next to him was the official trying to make the, the stop defensively. <laughs> Speaking of the official, Matthew Baker now gets called for a foul. So we'll see. Riley Blank shoot two with the line. But again, good transition there from the Mustangs. Connor Croft with the assist to Baker with the corner three. So they're running as we expected in this one. Blank sinks the first. And you got the Cout student body over. Oh, sorry. They got the Cout student body. They're trying to, trying to distract the shooter. Love to see it. Sinks the second anyway. Croft now bringing the ball up. So we're at the halfway mark here in the first quarter. 
It's 13 to four, Couch lead. After the three by Baker, Baker corrals the pass, tries to save it, but it's a turnover as he gets it and intercepted one. by Riley Blank and leads the transition for an and one basket, and that's Logan Zacharias, the six foot three senior. Yeah, catch mark with the foul. Thing is, if you're gonna go in and foul, you gotta make sure the guy doesn't make the basket. Again, hitting in and out off the backboard and in it goes. So again, hitting their free throws, the Hebron Hawks, and you're gonna have to do so in order to beat this Couch team. Vic with the pass, but great job defensively in the post as that one stolen by the Hawks. Yeah, they sealed them off well on that one. There's no entry way to get in. Blank. From the right elbow, driving. No good. Rebound catch mark. So Griffin Moore with the miss. Kautz now has it. Croft has it. He dribbles it to the top of the key. Looks to Matthew Baker on his right. Passes to his left. Passes to his right, rather. Croft. Crossover. Reverse layup. No good. Rebound. Hawks. And yeah, that's good, Griffin Moore on good, the rebound. Good defense by Hebron right there, contesting the shot. Croft just not able to finish. A little stagnation right here by, by the Hebron offense, trying to get the ball moving. Yeah, it looks like they're going to maybe try to get into a set here. Perhaps down six. They look they looked to their coach, Mike Grenis. Grenis talking to his guys. Again, just very stagnant right now. Up and under. There's a yep, good travel call. there. Good call by the official. That's uh, Larry Simano on the call. So Japheth and Weiler checks in. He checks in for Croft. Ann Weiler, a junior. Catch mark with it to Baker. Baker, driving baseline, goes up, shots blocked. Good defense there by the Hawks as that yep. help side defender was able to come and you know stop him in his tracks. Rayleigh Blank with, uh, with the swat there. Ann Weiler, out of bounds underneath to Baker. Baker driving baseline to Vic, back to Ann Weiler. Hitting Baker in the corner for another three. All right, and once he gets his feet set, he is on fire right now. So Baker's now hit two threes, one from each corner. 16 to seven here with a minute and 40 to play in the first period. Again, Hebron, not much movement away from the ball. Mars pulls up for three. No good, rebound Vic, there's a foul. But Skyler Martin picking up his first. Skyler oh. Martin, first one to check in oh. for the Hawks. Sorry, that's his second foul. Yeah. And he'll check out now in favor of Jackson Peeler. So they go a little four low, perhaps. Vic comes, get, gets it at the elbow. You see Baker's running the baseline. He comes up, top of the key now, he's got it. It's a good defense being played right now by Hebron. Driving middle, gets it to Ann Weiler. But you notice a little bit of the difference is that Kaus is really moving the ball. Everybody's setting screens away. Great defense here by the Hawks as they're forcing several ball reversals. Get it down to Vic though. Vic up, no good. Tap, tap, tap. Last touched by Vic, and so it'll be the Hebron Hawks basketball. Yeah, I was wondering why Vic just did, stood there and looked at the ball. He could have grabbed it and brought it back in. We got 40 seconds left in the first quarter. Bring it up slowly now is Griffin Moore. Pro gonna probably play for the last shot here. With th just under 30 seconds. Yeah. 
Holding it on his hip is Moore again. Gets it a blank, he does the same. And now Reese Mars doing it as well. Dribbling to the volleyball line. Yeah, Mars has just had, had not had any good looks from the three-point line. Looks like he may take another. Five seconds. Dribbling into the paint he is. No good. Tap, rebound, Vic. Time expires. So at the end of one, it's 16-7. to seven. The Couch Mustangs lead this one. Remember, folks, you're watching Game Day in the PCC on the PCS channel. Since 1919, farming has truly been a Berkey family calling for generations. But it's not just a farm. There is much more for families to enjoy. The county market, with freezers full of homemade, home-raised products. The bakery, where pastries, donuts, and more are made daily. The coffee shop, with local roasted hot and cold coffee and espresso drinks. The restaurant and ice cream parlor. Stop in, you won't be disappointed. Berkey Family Farms, 205 South Main Street in Coutts, and on the web at berkeyfarms.com. Did you know? Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike and Van Till, now you know. Welcome back as Berkey Family Farms and Couts presents RSN Game Day coverage of the 2022 PC Series Tournament right here on the PCS channel. Driving, kicking, inside out three attempt. Misses short, tries to get the, his own rebound there. That's Griffin Moore, he doesn't. Instead, there's a foul being called on him after the, trying to corral his own miss. And that's how we start the second quarter. As Cows bring the ball up, Joe Vick and Aaron Ketchmark both with four points in the game. It's a little inside-out action we've seen. Baker dials one up, no good. Rebound by Moore. He'll bring it up. I'll say that might, might be his first miss from the three-point line tonight. I believe you're right. He's, I thought he was two for two, hitting one three from each corner. Now two for three, perhaps, unofficially from three-point land. Mars has the top of the key. Jab steps, drives right, got it. Reese Mars, he's a threat. Yeah, beautiful take right there. Catch Mark looks at Kevin Duzan, his coach. He picks up his dribble. And yeah, never pick up your dribble unless you know where you're going with the ball. And Weiler hesitates for a moment, dials up a long two, no good. And yeah, that hesitation had to throw off his foul throw on a shot. They're, looked very unsure of himself. Yeah, and that's the first shot he's taken uh, today, so you want to try to get it in rhythm. Yeah, and, exactly. Catch and shoot. Absolutely. Missed there. Rebound by Vic. Big man will bring it up himself. They get it to Anweiler. Anweiler. Down low. Looking to facilitate his ballast. He gets it across to Baker. Ballas catches it now on the right wing, looking to the basket area. He sees catch mark. Sides pass to the top of the key. Joe Vick now looking. Ooh, high pass there. Anweiler can't corral it. Stolen by the Heburn Hawks, and that's Jackson Keeler with the steal. Yeah, Jackson Keeler doing a little dance on the line right there. Ooh, Reese nice Mars take. dancing himself. Dancing into the paint, finishing this time on the left side of the rim. You notice he, he feels the pressure at the three-point line, so all he did was give a little shot fake and take it to the hole. That's two nice takes in a row. Good pass inside to Baker. Baker off the back iron, no good. Looked like Griffin Moore was able to get it. Pick it clean. Yeah, it looked like so, but a foul call. That's just his second in just the last few moments here, so not the best sequence for Moore when it comes to fouls, but... He's been very active. Yes, he has. He has a few rebounds. He's been moving the ball well on offense, moving off the ball pretty well also. Baker back iron, no good. So just like his shot attempt earlier this possession, goes off back iron with a miss. He'll look to split a pair here with the second. Got it. 
17-11. 5.45 to play in the half. Griffin Moore just picked up two fouls. He'll bring the ball up. Let's see if Mars can get op another open look going to the basket. Driving middle, stopping him time, inside out three, attempt there by Peeler, got it! Boy, nice, nice feed by, by Blank right there, just taking the ball in, dishing it out. Right in the shot pocket, up it goes, and in it goes through the basket for Jackson Peeler. Peeler having his hands full there with catch mark, he picks up a foul. Boy, that is, it looks like that's going to be the seventh team foul on Hebron. So from the rest of the game, the rest of this quarter, counts will be shooting one and one. Shooting one and one at the very least for five minutes. And Couts hits their free throws. In their last meeting, Couts went 19 for 19 at the free throw line against the Hebron Hawks. That's a good percentage. It's, it's, <laughs> I bad. can't think of one better. <laughs> This is the second. Blank gets it to Moore. Looking to get it to Mars. They do on the right wing. Jab step, jab step, drives middle, kicks it to Peeler. They reverse it. Ooh, great pass by Blank. No good at the finish, though. And Connor Croft now has it for the Couts Mustangs. Yeah, Griffin Moore on the cut right there just couldn't finish it. Blank showing off some great passing ability, great court vision. Had the assist earlier. Yeah, threaded it between two counts players. And he gets a poke on the ball there on Connor Croft. So he's got active hands. Looks like Griffin Moore kind of pulled the chair a little bit, able to then get around and get a deflection there yeah, as he was being backed down in the post. Good defense. Good job now picking up the foul. Yeah, absolutely. Playing with a quick two. Didn't want to pick up his third. Good effort there and clean basketball. We love to see it. And a steal by Moore, intercepted. Good crossover at center court, takes S it to the hole. Slithering his way to the basket. There's a foul on the floor. So Griffin Moore, he is playing with great energy and intensity, even with the two fouls that he picked up earlier in the second quarter. Yeah, he's, he's got he's to walk that fine line between playing aggressive but not overly aggressive and picking up that third foul. Walks the line like a trapeze artist as he's put on quite the performance in the first half. Reese Mars with it, driving middle, putting it up. Back iron, tap, tap, and it's good. Wow, shooter touch right there. Wide yeah. open look. Close out by Mars, so, so the three's missed. Here comes Blank. Blank, stopping at a time, putting it up, no good. Tap back, here comes catch mark for the kaboom! Oh. Big jam right there by number 22, Ketchmark. Gets the student section fired up. The, the home crowd here loving it. It's the PCC tournament, folks. Kautz looking to get to the championship. They've won three straight. That's an early candidate for the IKORCC play of the game. I just wrote it down. We love taking notes while we're working, folks. And Weiler. For three in the corner, no good. Oh, went over the basket. That it did. So after the whistle. You know, I didn't know that was, uh, you couldn't go over the basket. I learned that when Larry Bird hit that shot many years ago from the baseline. Fading on the baseline. And shot it over the basket and in. Moore has it. So after the whistle, by the ball going over the basket, there's a momentary pause as the gym regains composure. Reese Mars stepping into the lane. Yeah, he's not putting it up in He's not feeling it from the three-point line today, but he is taking it strong to the basket and draws the foul. Yeah, those great players understand that they can make an impact in any facet of the game. If your shot's not falling, you're getting to the line. If you're not hitting your free throws, <laughs> then you're in trouble, right? Yeah. So as he misses. Vic gets it to Catchmark. Catchmark driving, stopping. Back to Vic. Vic with the pump fake, oh. drawing the foul. And, and that last trip down to court, Matt Baker picking up his second foul. So Matt Baker has two. 
Free throws have come at a premium here in this tournament, as we've seen from both the boys and the girls. It's been very costly for teams and triumphant for others. Yeah, counts not being very efficient at the line right now. No, they're looking to extend the lead and you gotta be able to knock down free throws. Connects on the second. Mike Grenis looking to his team. We go four low. Looking to get Peeler the ball at the top of the key. They do. They swing it. Yeah, counts right now is five for nine from the free throw line. So not being nearly as efficient as they were in the last time these two teams met. And it could be the difference as we have a close game here with two minutes to go. Two minutes and ten seconds, rather, to go in the first half. Driving is Reese Mars, putting it up, and Again. another and oh, one. Oh, he's calling the charge. Oh, really? Oh, no, he said the basket was good. Okay. okay, I thought he came out with his fist flying. Yeah, so Reese Mars looking to tie this one up at the free throw line. Doesn't. Catch mark. Connor Croft picking up his second foul. So Croft with two, Baker with two for the Mustangs. Oh, Hebron changing it up a little bit, going to a 2 3 zone. Good Come. deflection and steal there by Peeler, nope. only for a moment as Vic regains it. Croft dialing one up. No good. He shot that one from downtown couch. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. And any farther out, he would have been shooting it um, from uh, Walden or Valparaiso. There's not. <laughs> and that's the team's ninth for Hebron, so he'll sh be shooting a one on one. Makes the first. Yeah, we mentioned, I believe they got into the bonus with about five minutes to go. Yes. And so now we see with a minute 46, it's. Kind of perhaps coming back to bite the Hebron Hawks here as this lead is extended to three after both free throws being made. So it's 23 to 20. Yeah, Reese last time down the floor had a chance to tie it up at 21, missed the free throw. So a lot of missed free throws going on today. Yeah, and, and what a swing, right? You, you could have went from tying the game and now you miss and then you give up two free throws on this end and now from tying the ball game, you're down three. So a swing here late in the second quarter. The official getting into the action. Yeah, Larry Babcock kip checking uh, Jackson Peeler, <laughs> similar to the uh, to the official in the Bears game. What was that? A Cassius March. <laughs> is Hebron possibly playing for the last shot here? I don't With know. With a minute? That, that's a long 60 seconds. Mars is dancing at the top of the key. He does. No, they're definitely going to be winning the time of possession. That's true. As the pace is slowed down, and perhaps you want to slow down Couts a bit. Mars with another trip to the line. He's been automatic, systematic, getting to the foul line. So he'll shoot two more. Joe Vick picks up the foul. That is his first in, in the game. As the cheer section for Couts is trying to help him hit that free throw. Absolutely. I'm sure the keg's making some noise, too. <laughs> keg sitting front row, looking at Mars. Mars looking at the keg, looking to the baskets. A little wave action going there. Sinks it. Catch mark, inbound to Croft. Croft will bring it up now with about 40 ticks. Baker, quick pass back to catch mark, catch mark. Hanging. Oh. Oh, no how good. did that not go in? Oh. And it looks like the Hebron Hawks bench is not happy about that as the ball will stay here. Croft inbounding it underneath. They get it to Baker at the top of the key. Back to Croft. Croft skip pass to Baker. Baker from the three corner again, no good. This time rebounded by catch mark and back up it goes. Three-point game, 20 seconds left in the half. I think Baker was thinking of the pass right there. Yeah. Pointed to the scorer's table. That's an assist. 
Right, nine seconds left. Let's see if they can get a shot off. Mars at the elbow. Dumps it off. Inside out three opportunity. No good. Followed the misses more. More pulls up. No good. And that'll do it for the first half. We'll take a break. Remember, you're watching Game Night in the PCC on the PCS channel. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at TeamBlythe's.com, where the athlete shops. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Since 1919, farming has truly been a Berkey family calling for generations. But it's not just a farm. There is much more for families to enjoy. The county market, with freezers full of homemade, home-raised products. The bakery, where pastries, donuts, and more are made daily. The coffee shop, with local roasted hot and cold coffee and espresso drinks. The restaurant and ice cream parlor. Stop in, you won't be disappointed. Berkey Family Farms, 205 South Main Street in Couts, and on the web at berkeyfarms.com. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till, now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at TeamBlythe's.com, where the athlete shops. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Welcome back as Berkey Family Farms and Couch presents RSN game day coverage to the 2022 PCC tournament right here on the Region Sports Network. You can catch us on Facebook.com slash Region Sports and Region Sports.com. We got PCC tournament action in the PCC, PCS channel. 
Berkey Family Farms, where you'll find a county market, bakery, coffee house, restaurant, ice cream parlor, and more. Check out BerkeyFarms.com. We'd love to thank our sponsors. And so this first half has been very good. Yes, we, it has. It, it's been, we've seen some sustained two-way action. Uh, stay with us after the game as we tonight uh, present uh, the peak performers celebrating the best performances on the court for both teams. So hey, Right now, we got a, we got a couple peak performers. Absolutely. Got, Tell uh, us, Jay. Reese Mars with 14 points, 12 of them coming in the second quarter. And for Couch, we got Aaron Ketchmark with 11 points. Four for five from the field goal land, and four for five, or three for five from free throw. Now, that's, that's a contrast right there. Yeah, that is. Hey, you, you're looking at Couch, free throw shooting, seven for 11. Unlike the first game when these teams met, met they were 100%, 19 for 19. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing with the scoring for Couch, we have Connor Croft with two points. Joe Vick with five, Matt Baker with seven. That rounds out your count scoring for this morning. And looking at Hebron, we've got Jackson Peeler with three points, Riley Bank with two. As we've mentioned before, Reese Mars with 14, leading all scorers in the game. Six for 11 from field goal land. And let's take a look at his three-point shooting. He is 0 for 3. So like you mentioned earlier, if he's not doing it one way, he's doing it another. You, you know, we, he's, not hit, he's not feeling it from the three-point line, so he's taking it, being aggressive and taking it to the basket. Rounding out the scoring is Logan uh, Zacharias with three points. Yeah, so in that first half here, you know, Hebron's, Hebron's really trying to not just upset the Couch Mustangs and book a, you know, a later game here tonight for the championship. They're also playing for the victory keg. Yep. and. In this first half, we see the scoring, obviously, by Maurice Mars. That's something that, you know, is expected. He's able to do it on a nightly basis, it seems. And you mentioned, or we, we mentioned earlier in the game about how he's, you know, he missed his first two, three attempts. And then from there, he started really working it, getting to the painted area and getting to the basket and then missed another three. But some very key three-point baskets from his supporting cast. Zacharias had a good three. That Jackson Peeler three was a big one as well. They came at big moments in this game, and so they're able to be within three points of this home Couch Mustangs team here in the PCC tournament. But you, you look at Couch, they are two for seven from the three-point line, with uh, Matt Baker hitting two of five or two of five of the threes for him. So Couch is doing a nice job passing that ball around, getting everybody involved in the scoring. And Hebron doing the same as well. Yeah, Couch does a very good job of having a balanced attack when they're in the half court, but they really love to run. And we saw a jam from Aaron Ketchmark early in this one uh, in the first half in the second quarter. Well, and that right there would be an early candidate for. Our I-K-O-R-C-C -C play of the game. That, that dunk came at 3.30 in the second quarter. A, a steal, a breakaway, and then the left-handed slam brought the crowd to its feet. Oh, it certainly did. And they didn't sit down until I felt like two possessions <laughs> later when there was a missed three that went over the basket and it was a blown uh, dead by the official. So the, the faithful for both of these schools have come out in full support here for the morning game, the 11 o'clock start. And it has been a good one so far, and it's just... Perhaps it's just a harbinger for what's to come as we have a, a game right after this. We'll see uh, another semifinal for the boys, and that'll be between the Westville and Boone yeah. Grove, and that game will start at 1230. Yeah, so the Boone Grove Wolves, they got it done against the Cross. Westville got it done against South Central. Westville's a team or when you stay tuned with us next, you'll see that they like to get it out in transition as well as this Couch Teams does. And Boone Grove has some very, very talented players, just like we have here. So we're about a minute away from the third quarter. Jay, what do you think are some keys here in the second half, and what do we have to expect? Well, I, I think Hebron has got has to has got slow down Couch, make them get into their offensive sets, you know, Counts has had several breakaways for easy buckets or 
or, or they also hit the guy out on the three-point line, wide open look in transition. So I think Hebron has definitely got to stop there. Counts has just got to make sure they seal off the inside and don't let Mars get to the basket because he, he won. He caused a lot of havoc in there. He's getting to the free throw line, and he's, you know, so he's caused a lot of trouble in there. I think the one thing that they got to do is just shut it down, shut down Mars going to the, they've cut him out of any threes, making any threes. Now they just got to cut him off from the basket. Yeah, so we'll see some second half adjustments, I'm sure. But the thing is with these two schools, they know each other so well. They're anticipating these adjustments, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, they are. And it's all going to come down to execution. These teams know each other so well. These players have played with each other, against each other, whether it be AAU, whether it be during the regular season, but no bigger stage than the PCC tournament here at Couts, the 99th anniversary for the boys' tournament. And here we are underway with second half PCC action. Hey, you know, you talk about PCC, you, you got to talk about the crowd, the atmosphere. A lob there to catch Mark, no good. He's able to get the ball after it's deflected and put it up for two, and that's how we start the third quarter. Blank with it. Guarded by Croft. Croft getting a hand in there. Mars catching it at the free throw line. Dumps it off down to the right short corner. And the basket's good there for Logan Zacharias. His second field goal of the game. Hit a three in that first half. He's got now five points. Yeah, nice take right there. Baker dials up a corner three. He loves it. Misses it, though. He's saved there by Mars. He hit his first two threes, and has the last two he hasn't drawn iron on, so he's going to have to work on you know, getting back into the flow. Absolutely. Zacharias with it now. They reverse the ball. Hawks take a three. They got it. That one's buried there and by Griffin Moore. There we go. We got our first tie of the game. 27-27. Couch has led the entire way. No wire-to-wire -wire finishes here. Catch mark at the elbow. No good. Rebound by the same jersey number. That's Reese Mars. Mars dialing up a triple. Back iron, no good. Rebound, Croft. The Mustangs are running. Great bounce pass there. Wow. For the easy two way to set up his teammate. That's Tristan Ballas on the finish. What nice job, Aaron Ketchmark. Moving away from the ball, cutting to the basket. Great pass right between two defenders. Connor Croft threading the needle at the bounce pass there in transition. And you talked about it early on, how Couch Mustangs like to get out and run. Mars, top of the key, gets a screen. He doesn't want it. He kicks it back instead to Blank. Blank drives, kicks it back to Mars. Mars on the left wing, driving into two defenders. Gets a foul call there. Hey, that might be a candidate right there. That pass right there for the I-K-O-R-C-C -C play of the game. We're going to have a lot of them, folks. We may have one candidate each quarter. We might start having to, you know, do I-K-O-R-C-C -C play of the quarter, play of the first <laughs> five minutes. Three lifted there, no good. Foul on the rebound there by Vic. So Logan Zacharias picks up a foul after he picks up a field goal in this third quarter. All right, now he's got, he's got to play smart out there with three fouls this early in the second half. Ballas, catch mark, catch mark, back to Ballas. Ballas looking to the basket area. Oop. Not a whole lot of flow for the Couch team right here offensively. A lot of stagnation out there. Yeah, they earlier had that lob attempt that was deflected but still ended up with the basket. But outside of that, they really haven't moved the ball as well in... The half court, ooh, great dump there. But it's stolen there by the Hawks. Way to lay out for it is Moore. Here comes Mars, bounce pass. Good. Nice In feed. transition, Logan Zacharias. Mars with the great feed right there. Absolutely. Vic, bank shot, good. A little kiss off the glass. As Bill Raftery see. will say, with the kiss. <laughs> you don't see that often. Yeah, Vic is a very fundamental player, folks, not just as displayed by the bank shooting, but he's got great footwork on the post. He does a lot of really, really good things for this offense, and he may get going here after connecting on that mid-range jumper.
Yeah, Hebron settled into their half-court offense, getting some movement here. You know, Griffin Moore with the basketball right now, he's driving. Almost loses it there, but he's the one who hit the deck to start that transition with, that ended with that beautiful Reese Mars assist to Logan Zacharias. Yeah, so, good hustle. Yeah, and he's in doing that. We've been calling his name all night for hustle plays like that, and it, he's setting a screen. Wow, blocking call there as Reese Mars, you know, goes and drives and attacks the basket. Tristan Ballas picks up the foul. Tristan Ballas will now guard the inbounder. This one now tapped by Catchmark. It'll stay here. Good deflection there. One of our producers, Nathan Laird, trying to knock down the team as they try to go to the locker room. Good job, Nathan. <laughs> Blank. Back to Moore. Moore. Pump fake. Mars. Pull up jumper from deep. No good. Tapped. Tapped again. Ball's loose. Croft gets it. After Moore again hits the deck, diving. A lot of hustle out there by the by Hebron on the defensive end. Yeah, and he picked up those two quick fouls in the first half, but he's been playing outstanding ever since. He never missed a beat, not even for a moment. In fact, he was left in the game, so perhaps you know that with his high IQ and his high motor, he's able to be one of those guys that can play with two fouls, and you trust that as a coach. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of trust by the, by the coach. Certainly is, especially in the semifinal. Vic with the basket after the good feed by Croft oh. from the corner. Yeah, Vic did a nice job sealing the defensive player to the outside and a nice over-the-top pass. So it's a four-point game here in the third quarter with under three minutes to go in the third period. Yeah, so far only one tie in the game. Hebron has never led in this game. Zacharias gets on the short corner. He tries to flip it up. A great wall there. Great yeah. defense there by the Mustangs. Catch Mark dials it up. No good. Short. Rebound Zacharias. Here come the Hawks. Blank, jab step, stops on a dime, inside out, three opportunity. No, that would have been a two, his foot was on the line. Correct, so he misses, basket. Oh, Long nice iron. block. Great block there, after it appeared that Moore would have a sick bounce pass assist, but no, Baker as it's comes denied out. by Baker. A steal, Moore, running, looking back, goes up, no good. Good job by Gets his own miss. By Connor Croft right there to, to has make a miss that with layup. And another miss from, from point blank by the Hebron. Yeah, so Logan Hale with the last most recent miss there. Yeah, two good looks by Hebron Hawks and no baskets. That they did. So it's still a four-point game. Joe Vick says momentarily as he drills a three at the top of the key. He's shaking his head. What are you thinking? Come on. Wide open look. Great back cut. Getting wide open, bad defense right there by the Hawks. So Vic clapping his hands, giving a thumbs up to the faithful. Now Hebron's got to get a bucket here. They don't want this to open up to a 10-point game. Need to stop the bleeding. Blank, looking, Mars, top of the key. They swing it, looking to the basket area. Nothing, they're going to have to go back to the top of the key. Get it to Mars. Mars driving, scooping with the left hand, no good. Rebound there by the Couts. Mustangs, that's Matthew Baker with another rebound. Good job by Couts right there, not fouling, but make contesting the shot at the same time. Kout's going to hold on to the last 25 seconds to end the third quarter. Or not. Gr appeared to be a great steal there, but it wasn't necessarily corralled, and the ball's tried to be saved uh, for the steal. Unable to do so, so stay here. But 18 that, seconds left in the third. Yeah, but that was Riley Blank, number 10, in there getting his hand to, to the, poke that ball loose. 
He gives a jab, so he's playing all over the place on defense. And with 12 seconds left, he is guarding Connor Croft at the volleyball line. We'll see what happens here. Croft driving. Baseline. Puts it up. Reverse layup. It's good. What a take. Good if it goes. No good. 38 to 29, the Mustangs lead going into the fourth quarter. We'll take a break, folks. Remember, you're watching PCC game day coverage on the PCS channel. Since 1919, farming has truly been a Berkey family calling for generations. But it's not just a farm. There is much more for families to enjoy. The county market, with freezers full of homemade, home-raised products. The bakery, where pastries, donuts, and more are made daily. The coffee shop, with local roasted hot and cold coffee and espresso drinks. The restaurant and ice cream parlor. Stop in, you won't be disappointed. Berkey Family Farms, 205 South Main Street in Couts, and on the web at berkeyfarms.com. Welcome back, folks. You're watching Game Day in the PCC on the PCS channel. We're here from Couts High School, the opening Saturday game here in the 2022 PCC tournament. Remember, stay with us after the game as we'll name the Region Sports Network. Blue Collar Player of the Game brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Jay, what a wild third quarter that was. We saw a big run there by the Mustangs. Tell me about it. Yep. They tied it up. Hebron Hawks tied it up at 27, and since then, that was at the five-minute mark of the third quarter, Couts has gone on an 11-2 run. A game of runs. They open it up. However, to start the fourth quarter, we see a three-point, wide-open three-point attempt there by the Hawks. It's missed. We see Matthew Baker now bringing it up past the timeline, gets it to Chapeth and Weiler. Yeah, right now your scoring leaders are Aaron Ketchmark with 13. Griffin Moore with a steal. In transition, goes up with it. Did they call it on the ground? We'll um, I'm going to say, yeah, they called it on the ground do. before he attempted the shot. Yeah, so the foul occurs prior to the Euro step, so they do not give him the continuation. Instead, the Hawks will be taking it out of bounds underneath their basket. Yeah, and for the Hebron Hawks, Reese Mars with 14. He is stuck on 14 since the half. That's true. That's a very good point. So perhaps that has led to this kind of drought here by the Hawks. We see Reese Mars been able to get to the line all game. He does once again there after the blocking call. As the Counts faithful do not like that call, they are in a unison boo on that call. Looked like the defender did have his feet set, but they've been calling the block pretty much the entire game. They have not. I don't think I've seen one charge call yet. Yeah, so Kevin Duzan is going to talk with Larry Babcock perhaps about consistency like you just alluded to as Reese Mars missed the first attempt long. Back iron, shoots up the second. Got it. Got to convert at the charity strike when you are down. Yeah, so he splits a pair, makes it an eight-point game. Could have been a seven-point game. But nonetheless, they'll play trailing eights. They're trapping now the wing and the corner. Vic with it. Skip pass, long skip pass, gets it across. Good ball movement there, back inside. And a foul there, but great positioning there by Aaron Ketchmark. Yeah, good job, Ketchmark, sealing off the defender. Tristan Ballas, he had the, the easy 10-footer. I thought he should have taken the shot. Yeah. They lob it up to Ketchmark. Ketchmark catches it at the paint. Japheth Anweiler now with it. He drives the left, jumps, dumps it off to Joe Vick. Vick with the up and under. Little, ooh, little full work there by Joe Vick. Yeah, he did a beautiful under and over move with a clean look. Joe Vick drilled, uh, drilled the trailer top of the key three earlier. Gets it done there on the block, showing off the footwork. Reese Mars kicks it to the left wing. He'll come and get it back again at the top of the key. He fires up a three. Again long, missing. Connor Croft with the rebound for the Cows Mustangs. Yeah, he has had a drought, Mars, from the three-point line this whole game. So with up by 10 now, Cows is going to be content to let some clock run off. Yeah, and if you're the Hawks, you need three stops, three scores to really change this momentum here. 
Croft with it, kicking to Jabeth Anweiler. He dials it up. Got it! Jabeth Anweiler, big three in a big moment, coming off the bench. Okay, so it's a full timeout, folks. They'll take a break, so will we. Remember, you're watching game day coverage on the PCC and the PCS channel. Did you know? Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strack and Van Till, now you know. Welcome back, folks. You're watching game day coverage here from the PCS channel. We have the 2022 PCC tournament here at Coutts High School. It is now a 13-point ball game with six minutes and five seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. If you're just joining us now, Hebron went into quite the drought in the third quarter. Yes. The Coutts Mustangs were able to go on an 11-2 run, and to start this fourth quarter, they've had some missed opportunities at the free throw line, splitting a pair to only go down eight, for that to only be extended to a 13-point game after the most recent basket, a three-point bucket from Japheth Anweiler. But the Hawks need a score here. Yeah, the Hawks only coming up with five points in the third quarter. So that is a drought. Mars getting back to the paint as he's been doing so great today. Uh, oh. Did they call a charge? They call the charge. And picking up the picking up the charge was Tristan Ballas for the Colts. Mars taking the ball to the basket. Just a little bit out of control. Tristan Ballas takes the charge and what is one of the most momentum swinging, most important single plays in basketball, and that's taking a charge. You give a give a defender to you give a foul to the uh, to the offensive player. Oh, call a jump ball right there. So there's a jump ball, but a charge. You give a foul to the offensive player. You get possession. It's a defensive stop at the same time, all in one. So big moment there, with under six minutes to play. It's a 13 point ball game. Croft being guarded. Double teamed at the right at the. Anweiler can't hold on to it great, but he finally regains possession of it, gets it to Vic down low, but active hands there by the Hawks. So now you're seeing the pressure being dialed up, and it's in a yeah, must-needed way. Hebron Hawks scrambling all over to four defensively. Left open, Joe Vick under the basket wide open, but he just could not handle the ball. So you're going to see the Hawks play with urgency, and you're going to potentially see the Mustangs play with poise. That would be the two aims for each team. Catch mark dribbles it off his foot, so it'll go to the Hebron Hawks. Big, you, big you stop gotta right put the, there. Big you, stop right yeah, there. Yeah, that is a big stop. But you got to get a score here now. You yeah, got to get a score. They just can. They can't throw a bucket in the ocean right now. No, they can't. They cannot. They have only this rim to look at, and they are having a hard time this second half. Think about it. these two teams. The last time they met was 83-67. Yeah, high-scoring affair. Yeah. A lot more defense. Oh, and they call the block right there. Okay, so Griffin Moore, he takes it hard. Yes, he does. Hold, coming up, holding the side. Yeah, so after taking the charge there, Ballas, he takes another shot, this time to the ribs. Good job by the official, checking to make sure he was okay. Perfect. I think the officials in this game have done a very good job, been very consistent. Griffin Moore realizes the mismatch there as he's got the smaller Anweiler on him. Tries to go for a power layup, doesn't connect. And instead, it gets out to Connor Croft in transition, and he scores with an easy layup. Wow, he did just a strong take to the basket. Mars just cannot hit the three-point. And all of them seem to be long for Reese Mars. I think it's time for uh, Couts to just, you know, move the ball, work for a good shot. Don't let him, don't turn it over. Yeah, you have to come meet the ball. You have to come meet each pass. They don't do that there, so there's a deflection. But, however, after the deflection, they still maintain possession. But, yeah, having to be strong with the ball, having to meet each pass and play fundamental. Anweiler drives, kicks it to Vic. Vic kicks it to the cutting catch mark, but the pass is off the mark, and we have a transition opportunity only for a moment. Great deflection there right. by Connor Croft 
on the transition defense. Yeah, transition defense. That You know what? Defense is all about hustle, and Couts just did not let them get a wide-open look right there defensively. Yeah, what apparently looked for a second as a two-on-one break quickly became a, an even 2-2 two -two break and then a deflection there. So great transition defense by the Mustangs. Mars dials up a three this time from the corner. There's a foul called as the shot went up. Looks like it's going to be on number 33, Griffin Moore. Lead is extended now to 15 after the most recent transition layup by Connor Croft. Baker with it. Hebron definitely extending the defense. Let's see if they try and trap again here. Dump it off to Vic. Vic strong with it, goes up with it, and good. Timeout Hawks. It's a full timeout. So we'll take a break here, folks. Remember, you're watching the PCC on the PCS channel. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Welcome back. You're watching PCC Boys Basketball, the semifinal in the 2022 PCC Tournament here on the PCS channel. Remember to stay with us after the game as we'll name tonight's peak performers, celebrating the best performances on the court for both teams. Yeah, right now you got Aaron Ketchmark leading the team with 13 points and Reese Mars with 14. Those, those could possibly be our two players. Yeah, so we've seen some very good back and forth basketball in the first half. Kautz went on a big run in the third. Yes, they did. And they did. haven't let up since. Yeah, they have, they have put their foot on the gas pedal and have opened this lead up to a 17-point lead with three minutes and 30 seconds to go. I think the story of today's game, as they do hit a three Hebron, has been their lack of connections on the, from the three-point line. Yeah, so Griffin Moore is able to knock one down there. They're going to need quite a few more. But it's one at a time. There's three minutes and 22 seconds, so they're definitely playing with urgency, as we've seen. And, and they will now pressure full court. Yeah, definitely extending the defense to... The only problem with that is that when you extend the defense out past the three-point line, if they can reverse the ball, they get an open look. Absolutely. Strong of the basketball is Kautz. Double team there by Baker. Baker gets it down low. Great move there. Great patience going up and drawing the foul. And that's Tristan Ballas. So Tristan Ballas, good drop step there. Yes. Good ball fake. Gets his defender in the air. Gets in, draws what? the contact, and he's at the line shooting two. Yeah. Logan Zacharias draws the foul. That is his fourth. Dallas misses in the back iron. It kicks right. Both teams around 50% from the charity strike. Yeah, 0 for 2 on that trip. Yep. Big stop right there by the Hawks. Let's see if they can bang home a three here. Mars driving. Looks like he, he was... Looks like he was kicking to perhaps that corner and that uh, his offensive player didn't necessarily yeah, go Griffin, down there. Yeah, Griffin Moore was setting himself for the three, but Mars thought he was going to slide down with him. Yeah, and I couldn't confidently tell you who's, you know, who's the mistake there. Great pass there by Catchmark down to Ballas. Yeah, that's what, we, that's what I just said. You know, you yeah. extend the defense out at this end, mm -hmm. you're going to leave some wide-open breaks at the other end. Absolutely. That's exactly what happens. A quick basket there for the Mustangs. Heaves a three is Mars. No good, Vic, with the rebound. Here we go again, extending the defense. And good ball movement. Yeah, well, you know, Council's just got great ball movement. They see the open man. They're one step ahead. Yeah, and they're well coached by Kevin Duzan, catching it on the elbow there. A little buddy action there, so from... Yeah, Joe Vic with a nice look pass right there. Yeah, Vic to catch mark this time, as we saw catch mark to Vic earlier, so they're playing well in tandem. Mars driving, scooping, good. 
at this point, they're going to be willing to give up the two, two, ball, two ball right there instead of the three. Absolutely. They're just going to limit perimeter shots here as that's all that can happen here for the Hawks. Another great bounce pass, this time from half court. And finishing there is Aaron Ketchmark after the assist by Matthew Baker. Deep three there by Moore. Moore, that's, that's two in a row for him. Full timeout. We'll take a break. It's 53 to 38 with a minute 42 to play. Remember, you're watching PCC Basketball on the PCS channel. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythe's.com, where the athlete shops. Welcome back. Fourth quarter here, minute 42 to play in regulation. It'll end in regulation, very likely. It's 53 to 38. The Mustangs with a commanding lead after the great run in the third quarter and continuing to do so in the fourth. Stay with us, however, after the game as we'll name the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game. Brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Full court pressure by the Hawks. It, you know what? It's great team defense by Couts. You know, you're talking about blue collar player of the game. Sometimes we do blue collar players mm. of the game. I love that. You know. Short Hebr there on the triple there by Mars. Hebron, I think the storyline for this game right here is Hebron's three-point shooting. They are four for 18 from the three-point line. They have not been able to get any good looks. And think about it. They're four for 17. And number 33, Griffin Moore, has hit two of the last three they've taken. So before he's hitting those two, they were two for six, two for, uh, two for 15. I think I, I, Whoa. Have to, I have to go with that as my storyline of the game today. Catch mark. Good on the first. Shoot. Counts, Shoot. Counts will be shooting one and ones the rest of the game. Yep, so he'll be shooting his second now after making his first. 95 seconds remaining. Misses there. Corral there. Moore. He'll stop on a dime. He'll pull after the pump fake. A foul there as Aaron Catchmark was. He's going to be shooting trailing. three. Yeah, so he'll shoot three free throws. He's pleading his case, though, that's for sure. That he is. Is Simano down there talking to him? Yep, uh, Larry Simano, the official, talking to the players. As, yeah. As, as Ketchmark's still pleading his case <laughs> on, the, on the foul. Yeah. Maybe he's going to go to law school. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe he is. Larry Simano holds up three to let him know. Yeah, he's shooting three, bud. Yep. Holds up the two. Shooting two, bud. Two more. Well, you, you know, you, you talk about this PCC tournament. I think you got to talk about the crowd. Absolutely. You, you got the student sections at either end. You got this place is pretty full. You know, the, we were talking about it before the game. It holds about thirteen hundred. I would say you got at least a thousand here. Yeah, that's and that's at, for the eleven o'clock game. <laughs> we got we got more action for you. We got one uh, coming up here shortly after this one, and then we have six o'clock for the championship with the girls' game, uh, and then the boys' game coming at eight o'clock. So we have a full slate of games here at Couts. So perhaps you know if you're if you're here for the morning games, you want to kill some time. There's a subway on Main Street, <laughs> folks. We're here for basketball, and that's it and we love it in the PCC. It's really, it's really no better tournament, I think, a conference tournament in the state. Truthfully, when it comes to the pageantry, when it comes to the history, you have the Victory Cup, you have the Victory Keg, you have the cheer blocks. Another missed free throw there by the Mustangs, rebounded by Moore. Moore, Euro, 
Putting it up, no good. Rebound Vic. Should have stopped and popped from the three-point line. He's been on fire from there. Yeah, long pass there. Ballas, he connects after the assist by Connor Croft from half court. Miscommunication there. Oh, it looks like it was tipped, so they still have it. Steal by oh, Vic, but he steps out, out of bounds. bounds. Yeah, so we mentioned this tournament and how special it is, and it's the Saturday of it. Uh, we have the Spirit Award is given to the PCC school that displays the best school spirit during the tournament. So since 2000, the 15-16 season, this award has consisted of a combination of the best cheer block as well as palm dance routine and cheerleading performance. So they also award the best school in each category. So this tournament has it all. Yes, it does. Baker. And he lays it in after the steal. 35 seconds remaining. 19-point ball game. And it looks like Couch going to be playing tonight. So they'll continue to play here at home. They'll compete for a championship. We'll see who they play if you watch the second game and see who wins that one. Great move there by Peeler as he's able to put it in there. There's 15 seconds and counting. Couch is just going to walk this one up. I think you can put this one in the books for Couch. Victory keg stays here. There will be no need to paint it. He, he was going to start to walk games. off the court. <laughs> 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 he was almost looked like he was going to pull a LeBron James there, just start walking with the ball. <laughs> yeah, right? I dare you to call it travel. I dare you. It's 59-42, to 42, our final here in the morning game, the 11 o'clock game between the Hebron Hawks and the Couch Mustangs. So, folks, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back. Uh, we'll, you know, name some awards and so on and so forth. But make sure uh, to stay tuned with us when we come back. Remember, you're watching game day coverage of the PCC Boys Basketball and Girls Basketball Tournament here on the PCS channel. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean-to-cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Since 1919, farming has truly been a Berkey family calling for generations. But it's not just a farm. There is much more for families to enjoy. The county market, with freezers full of homemade, home-raised products. The bakery, where pastries, donuts, and more are made daily. The coffee shop, with local roasted hot and cold coffee and espresso drinks. The restaurant and ice cream parlor. Stop in, you won't be disappointed. Berkey Family Farms, 205 South Main Street in Coutts, and on the web at berkeyfarms.com. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythe's.com, where the athlete shops. 
Welcome back, folks. You're watching post-game coverage here after the 11 o'clock morning game between the Hebron Hawks and the Couts Mustangs. So Couts able to pull away a, a big victory here, 59-42. to 42. So, Jay, it was a great first half. It was close, and then Couts was able to pull away after the run in the third quarter. That continued in the fourth. But regardless, there were some peak performers for both teams tonight. So it's time to name tonight's peak or today's peak performer celebrating the best performances on the court. Tonight's peak performer for the Hebron Hawks was? For Hebron, it is going to be Reese Mars. He had 17 points. He was, I think, and this is the storyline. I, I know it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse. He was 0 for 10 from the three-point line today. Wow. This morning. Wow. And maybe it's too early in the morning for Reese Mars to shoot a three, but 0 for 10. Couch did a great job defensively extending that defense out to the three-point line, forcing him to take the ball to the basket. And I think that is that was huge for Couch. Yeah, Couch was able to get out on him when he was shooting and they know that. Kevin Duzan knew that coming into this one because Reese Mars in their last meeting, he hit six threes against them. So he goes from six threes making in that uh, last outing to zero today. Uh, tonight's peak performer for Couts would be who? And we're going to go with Aaron Ketchmark. He had 18 points. From the two points, he was seven for 10 from the field. Wow. Seven for 10. And Couts is a team nine for nine from the two-point two point area field goal percentage, nine for nine in the fourth quarter. Wow, so they buried everything inside the arc there in the fourth quarter to just put this one away. Yes, they did, and we talked about it. it you know, Hebron extended the defense out past the three-point line and counts with their great passing and great vision across the court hit guys wide open for layups. So it's easy to be nine for nine when you're shooting layups. <laughs> yeah, high percentage <laughs> shots, right? Yields high percentage results. Yes. So it's also time to name the Play of the game presented by IKORCC, training professionalism and partnerships for economic development. Learn more at IKORCC.com. Who had the play of the game today presented by IKORCC? It was Reese, Ma uh, oh, sorry, wrong number 22, Aaron Ketchmark with the dunk. And that came at 3.30 in the second quarter. A great steal, breakaway, got the momentum, Came across the rim with the left-handed jam, electrifying. Got the whole, got both teams, both both crowd, both both uh, sides of the court got got up and cheered for that one. Yeah, that was an outstanding, outstanding jam. We love to see it here in the PCC tournament. Special players making special plays, folks. Speaking of that, it's time to name the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game. Brought to you by the Region Sports Network. The only game in town. The Region Sports Network Blue Collar player of the game today was? It's going to be Joe Vick. 16 points, 7 of 8 from the field. <laughs> and let's look at it. Couch was 62% from the field in the game. And let's say, look, they were 52% from the charity strike. They're, sh they're better shooting uh, <laughs> with defense on them than they are from the charity strike at 52%. I think, you know, for Couch, that's the one thing they've got to look at is Kevin Dezan, the head coach, if he's going to go through and look at anything that's negative in that game, it's got to be the free throw shooting. You cannot shoot 52% from the charity strike and get away with wins very often. Yeah, you have to be able to make shots when the clock has stopped and no one's guarding you. Yeah, and then you look at Hebron on the other side of the ball, four of 18, that comes out to 22% from the three-point line. And, you know, that's, that's, that was, that's great defense, extending the defense, getting guys in people's faces. No open looks for Hebron from the three-point line this, this morning or this afternoon. Yeah, so we'd love to acknowledge our crew here Executive producer Chris Ramirez, coordinating producer Nathan Laird, as well as Larry Babcock, uh, myself, Mike Jamia, alongside me with this one, Jay Simmons, outstanding job by Jay, outstanding job by Zach Miller, our game producer. David Walters was hooking us up with stats all the way, feeding us. We were hungry. Isaiah yes. Gransberry on video doing an outstanding job. We'd like to give a special thanks to Joe Wagner, the athletic director at Couts, doing an outstanding job hosting here. 
Uh, also, shouts out to Coach Kevin Duzan from Couch and Mike Grenis from Hebron. So, folks, stick with us. Uh, we'll have a new stream, so a new video we'll be putting up, and that will be the 12:30 game that will be starting uh, here momentarily as the teams are warming up, and that's between Westville and Boone Grove. So join us for that. Remember, you're watching game day in the PCC on the PCS channel.